Hey, what's up, Rattler? So about a year ago, I was over here at Ryan Dolan's house doing a video called How to Buy Your First Crested Gecko. Well, I was at the Wings, Tails, and Scales Expo just a little bit ago. You may remember that video, but I saw some of the coolest red crested geckos on Ryan's table. So right now, Ryan's going to show us all about the red crested geckos, and you guys are in for a surprise because he also has this dark line of crested geckos. Wait until you see this. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. So, so much has changed in here since the last time I was here. What, about a year ago or so when we filmed uh, How to Buy Your First Crested Gecko? And when we were at the Wings, Tails, and Scales Expo here in Minnesota, you had some red crested geckos that just blew my mind. And I want to see everything about those. And you have your own line and you have another line of red. Is that right? Yep. I have my own uh, regular bicolor line, which yeah. is a, a full red with some white spots and maybe some pinstriping on the back of the legs. Okay, and also, we definitely want to see those. Got a few of them for you. Yeah. And then we also got one that is from some of my original geckos, which is a neon confetti Dalmatian, which is red by color with Dalmatian spots as well as red Dalmatian spots. Okay, we want to see all of those. All right, so show us what you got. All righty. Wait, <laughs> show me what you got. You show me <laughs> what you got. There you go, I love it. <laughs> Do I even need to ask if you're a Rick and Morty fan? I mean, come on. Um, all right, so when I first started breeding crested geckos, I started off with two that I got from a pet show. Nothing special. Uh, they weren't sold as, you know, very high end. But then through breeding on my own, I was able to isolate certain traits. So the first one I have is actually my very first crested gecko. So in here, this is my favorite part, searching for them. Yeah, yeah. You have a lovely man bun, by the way. Thank you. I've yes. been trying to uh, look like my favorite herper. I don't dry, uh, look like that. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so this is my very first one. She's got a little bit of an olive tone, but also has some reds to her. What caught my eye originally when she was younger, she did have a lot of reds. It is the morning, so they're not going to be as fired up. But you can see some Dalmatian spots to her. And what I didn't notice at first were some of the red spots, like here, here, and here. So that is kind of one of the starting grounds for a neon confetti Dalmatian. Like I said before, you have some of the red spots as well as black spots and a red base. Unfortunately, it is the morning and these aren't as fired up as they could be, but they're still, even not fired up, these are amazing. And this is her current pairing. This is one from Altitude Exotics. This was from their neon confetti line. So here you can see a lot more of the expressed red Dalmatian spots. And hopefully with this one, it'll help to express some of the, the red Dalmatian spots from my female. So we showed you the original gecko of mine. This is one of her offspring. Now this was not planned to be like this. So I was very excited to see that you know, she had some really nice, strong red traits to her. So with this one here, you can see the, the big blotches, the big Dalmatian spots, which a lot of people are liking, including myself. Also, you have even more of the red spots. You can see some on her forearm here, on the side. Lots of good color to her. Lots of nice big dark spots of black and red. Yeah. It is something that you won't often find by accident. Typically, if you do have Dalmatian spots, it will be the black spots or like some of the, the lighter kind of oil spots as sometimes they're referred to. But you typically don't see the red Dalmatian spots unless it's being selectively bred for that. Right. This was actually a pink line. Did you hear that? Uh, sort of. Was that your stomach? It's these two chirping at each other. Ah! So when, when crested geckos breed, they're very vocal. You typically will hear them at night. But these two in here, you can actually hear them right now chirping at each other. Wow, I thought you had a bad breakfast burrito. <laughs> well, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. <laughs> so here is another marvel of selective breeding. 
This is a pink line Ooh. of Crested Gecko. Look at that. So this line is not one of my own. This is from Thomas Favaza. Uh, I met him at Tinley and he was showing me this. You can see some of the red Dalmatian spots on there too. Yeah. Uh, when these guys actually come out of the egg, you can see that they're pretty light colored to begin with. Very fun to work with, very new. Uh, how he got to it, I have no idea. That'll be his secret. Right. So one of my favorite geckos too is when trying to breed for the, the red, sometimes they come out a little lighter, not quite the pink, but some of my favorites are the orange bicolor. Bicolor means it's two tones of the same color. So there's not any, so there's no patterns on the top ridge. I can see down the dorsal, there's nothing really distinguished to mm -hmm. describe it as something else. Just another flat color. So flat color on the side, flat color on the dorsal. All right, so who's in door number 10? We have appropriately named Red right here. Whoa. So this is one from Kimberly, I believe Kimberly K. Lucas of Gorgeous Gecko. Yep. So she has done a lot of amazing, really nice, really crisp, dark reds. Well, yeah, Kim has been breeding crested geckos for a lot of years, actually. And as a matter of fact, I interviewed Kim and her crested geckos for her purse, too. So this is Kim's line of red, and you have your own line of red as well, correct? Uh, working on it, yes. Working on it, okay. Well, I see another follow-up video as soon as that project takes off a little bit, but you have a little <laughs> bit to show us about your bloodline, right? Yes, I do have a couple here to show you the progress I've made. Fantastic. I was hoping to show off this guy today, but he decided that he wanted to shed. You can see some of the darker reds like here, like in the brindle striping. A lot of orange, so not quite that bicolor. So this would uh, be a brindle. But when this guy is done shedding, he has some really cool contrasting reds and oranges. Again, with my initial crested gecko, I started breeding with it. Didn't have an initial plan set up, um, but then one day, some eggs started hatching and they came out pitch black. Wow, that is just midnight black. And now how old is this one here? This one here is just under, I wanna say about nine, 10 months. Wow. With this gecko, this is probably the second or third generation of geckos that I've tried and you can see now that there's no patterning on the side, so it's patternless. Uh, and it actually came from breeding more of like olive colored geckos, yeah. more like fawn or buckskin, some typically normal, but with the reduced pattern, and again with this second and third generation coming out, you can see it's a lot more defined now. Gotcha, okay. That is amazing. Wow, with the crested gecko this dark, those eyes just pop in contrast. This, this may be one of the best looking crested geckos I've seen. Oh, you're too kind. Well, I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> so, does the world know about these yet, or am I the first one to introduce these to the world? You're actually one of the first people to see these in person. Uh, and as far as the world is concerned, I showed one when they first hatched, and just kind of a teaser saying, sorry guys, not for sale. But this is what you can start expecting to see from me. Wow. So you heard it here, Rattlers, for the first time ever, you guys got a sneak peek into these amazing dark crested geckos. That is one of the most awesome bloodlines I've ever seen. And you guys have just seen it first. Quite awesome, man. Thank you for, yeah, I'm gonna get two more subscribers out of that for showing, oh man. Happy to get you three more subscribers, dude. Awesome, man, thank you. I need every subscriber I can get, yes. <laughs> All right, so again, for the first time, we got to see the dark line as babies. I can't wait to see what they look like as adults. So here's the second generation mom. Okay, so they do lighten up a little as adults, but man, they are still really dark. They do lighten up a bit when they get older, so it's hard to really see their, their true expression. Wow, so they just, they retain those dark sides as adults, and they lighten up a little bit, but man, that is still a really good looking gecko. So this is the mom of the dark babies that I just revealed. All right, so the mom is actually a little darker. That head is really light, but the body is kind of almost uniform dark. That is amazing. Uh, they, they produced probably 10, 15 clutches for me total. And I've held back those two, and I think that's it. Otherwise, they weren't as dark as I was looking to, uh, to select a breed. Right. Either. So I only have two of those, about 10 to 15. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's the thing about selective breeding. You know, I mean, sometimes you're gonna get the offspring that you're looking for, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. And I've, then you take the offspring that you're looking for and you raise those up and you breed those and that, uh, that gives you the results that you want in selective breeding. Yes, and as you can see with the babies, they've really paid off. 
so cool. Usually when I'm touring around and I'm filming at people's places, the babies always hatch the day after I leave, but look at this. You've got a little baby hatching here while I'm here. That's incredible. All right, so you were telling me that you incubate your eggs and treat your eggs a little bit differently than other crested gecko breeders do. Yes, um, something I've done just through experience is that when I have a crested gecko hatch, they come in pairs of up to two, uh, so that's their clutch. And what I'll do is when I incubate them, I have them in their own separate, uh, so with per clutch, I have them together. And I usually give them about two days to come out on their own. Typically with crested geckos, they will hatch at a random interval of, I, I believe about 90 days is usually when they start to hatch if with non uh, temperature control incubation. Right. They're just at room temperature right now. So usually what I'll do after that two day span has passed, I will try to uh, open the egg up and see if there's movement inside. When, in my experience, when I've had a gecko take longer than two days past its clutch mate, I've noticed that the egg has died. So with this in mind, that is why I open it. I don't recommend it for everyone. This is something that I have learned along the way of talking to other breeders. Um, again, something I don't recommend for someone new going into it, but I do have a few tools that make it a little easier to do so. Everything I have is cleaned with F10. That is a veterinary spray. So it is a animal safe spray that will help to clean the utilities off. Now this is just a regular X-Acto knife. It's really nice because it will be able to cut through the shell. The shell is not going to be a hard calcified shell that you see with other reptiles. So you can you can see how soft the egg is. It's easy to puncture it. You want to be very careful not to go in to the egg because that could injure the gecko itself. So you just lightly scratch across. So basically, you're just like cutting ball python eggs open. Pretty much, yeah. So a lot of crested gecko keepers are gonna cringe at this practice. Yes, a lot of them will because they like to let the eggs come out naturally. And I, I don't disagree with that, but with part of being in captivity is that the survival rate should be a lot higher. So with that in mind, we have the capability to help these eggs hatch. And I feel that we should be doing so if we're gonna take the best care of them. No, I don't disagree actually. Sometimes what you can do is you can move around on the side, kind of wake them up saying, hey, what's going on in there? Why aren't you out of the egg yet? Time to be alive. So you just stroke the egg and there he is, he's coming out. Look at that. He says, nope, I'm hanging out right here for a while. Well, at least we just got him to take his first breath. There he comes, look at that. And that is a live egg hatching of a baby crested gecko. That just rules. That is just incredible. Ryan, these are amazing crested geckos. You have some of the most amazing ones. I'm gonna put a link uh, in the description below so that you guys can find Ryan and if you guys want one of his crested geckos you better hurry up because these guys are going to sell out so anyway rattlers I am going on a epic adventure you guys have got to subscribe hit that little bell when you do so you never miss those uploads it's a surprise where I'm going but it's going to be epic so again like this video share this video and comment below and let us know do you like the red ones better or do you like the dark ones better I want to hear from you so comment below and let us know that and until the next reptile adventure love the planet feed your reptile obsession and rattle on